Hey, welcome back to the next lesson of our zigzag tutorial series. In this lesson, we're going to be going over how to create the game over mechanic. Now, the first thing that we want to do is create the game objects that we'll need for our game over. And so I'm going to right click on the canvas and we're going to go down to UI and select panel. We can then rename this panel to game over and then going to right click on our panel, go down to UI and select text. We can then change the text field to read game over. We can then scale up the width and height of this text object. Let's say 300 by 100. And we can then select best fit. I'm also going to reposition it up towards the top of our screen. Next, we're gonna create a button for restarting our game. So I'm gonna right click on our game over panel go down to UI and select button and then going to rename this button to restart and we can then scale this button up a bit and then going to select the text object of this button and change the text field to read restart next we need to create a death zone for our game and so I'm going to click on the create drop down menu and select 3d object and then cube we then want to rename this cube to something like Death Zone. We can then center this cube object in our scene view, and I'm going to move it down in the Y direction by negative three. We then need to scale this cube out in the X and Z directions, and so I'm going to make it 10. We then want to make it so that we can't see this cube object in our scene, and so I'm going to remove the mesh filter and mesh render components. And so the only component that you should have on this object is a box collider component. And we want to make that collider a trigger. So I'm going to select the is trigger option. We can then attach our follow script that we created in our last video. This will make it so that the death zone is always beneath our ball object. And lastly, we want to set a new tag for this object. And so I'm going to set it to this tag that I've created called death zone. From here, we then want to open up our ball controller script. Inside the script, we need to add a special function, which is the onTriggerEnter function. And so I'm going to type void and then onTriggerEnter and hit tab, which should auto-complete this function. Inside this function, we want to first make sure that we are entering the trigger of our death zone. And so I'm going to type if other, which is our parameter, dot tag, equals and then in quotes I'm going to type death zone in the same way that I've typed it for our objects tag then inside this if statement we're going to first set our is alive bool equal to false and then going to set the velocity of our balls rigid body to be just gravity so my rb dot velocity equals physics Dot gravity and then on the last line we want to call a function that we will create within our menu controller script and so we're going to type menu controller and then we're also going to create an instance variable for the script and so I'll type instance and then our function is going to be called game over parentheses semicolon we can then save this script and we'll go over to our menu controller script. Inside this script, we need to first create an instance of this script. And so I'm going to type public static menu controller. And then I'm going to call this instance. We then need to create a few other variables. The first one is going to be a serialized field of type game object. And I'm going to call it game over panel. The next one is also going to be a serialized field of type game object and I'm going to call it main panel. And the last one is going to be a serialized field of type int called game level number. Once we have these variables created the first thing that we need to do is initialize our instance variable and we'll do this within the onEnable function. And so we'll set instance equal to this. 
Next, let's create that game over function that we're calling within our ball controller script. And so this is going to be a public void function called game over. And inside this function, we want to just enable our game over panel and disable our main panel. So I'm going to type game over panel dot set active and I'm going to pass in true. And then we can type main panel dot set active and I'm going to pass in false. Now let's create a public function that we can pair to the restart button that's on our game over panel. And so this is going to be a public void function called restart. Now inside this function we need to access the scene management namespace. And so up at the top I'm going to type using unity engine dot scene management. And then inside our restart function we can call scene manager dot load scene and we're going to pass in our game level number variable. Once we have this we can then go ahead and save the script and go back to Unity. Once you're back inside Unity we want to select our canvas game object which has our menu controller script attached to it and we need to then set these variables. So the first variable, our game over panel, we want to set to our game over game object, which we created just barely. And then our main panel, I'm just going to set to our action button. And then we want to make sure that our game level number is set to zero, after which we want to open up our build settings. So I'm going to go to our file drop down menu and select build settings. And then we need to add our current scene to the scenes in build list. And so I'm going to click the add open scene button. We can then close our build settings. And the last thing that we need to do is set the restart function for our restart button. And so I'm going to select our button, go down to the on click field, click the plus sign. We'll then drag in our canvas game object and then use the drop down menu to go to menu controller and select restart. Once you've done all this, we can then disable our game over panel and we can test our project. And so now I can start rolling. And when I fall off of the track, I should collide with the death zone and our game over panel appears. I can then click the restart button, which will reload our game scene and we can play again. And so now we have a complete gameplay loop for our zigzag game. And that's everything that we're going to cover in this lesson.